silver horse retreat. Let me see it's in, it's in right here. What is Red Pill Unplugged Red doing at Silver Horse Red Retreat? Red cool hat, where'd you get that? Oh, somebody gave it to me. You're right. <laughs> Nobody gave it to me. Silver, there was a silver sign, but it isn't. That's, no, a, go. that's a dude. <laughs> no, it wasn't a dude. <laughs> They're very tuned in, they're very perceptive, they're, they know everything about you. When we are in the presence of horses, our hearts will calibrate to theirs, to mm. their heartbeat. This is Diva. Black. Diva, yeah. Diva is a Percheron. She's a draft or so you notice she's a lot bigger. Yeah, she's huge. Yeah, she's big. And, uh, she, I've had her since she was six months old. She was a rescue from the Premarin industry. Do you know about that? Mm. Premarin is a hormonal replacement therapy drug that gets to menopause of women and men with prostate cancer. It causes cancer in women and breast, breast cancer and heart disease. So then the sales went down dramatically. There were, I think, 30,000 pregnant mares on the uh. rescue circuit. So Premarin means wow. pregnant mares urine. Oh. And it's mostly in Canada, they still do it, and it comes from their urine. So they're pregnant and then they collect the urine and that's the product. So the byproduct is the foals. She was one of the foals. They don't need the foals unless they restock. I see. She was one of the foals. They go to the feedlot and then they get sold for meat overseas. And then Ruby is also from the permanent industry. And, uh, she actually had one foal in the permanent industry and she was born into it. So she was one of the horses that got restocked. Mm -hmm. And then I got her when she was about four years old. And then there's Pretty Boy, the white one. So he's uh, the only gelding. The gelding is a stallion who's had his balls cut off, right? Pretty Boy. Oh, snip. <laughs> Sorry, Pretty Boy. And uh, he's up in years, you know, he's, I think he's about 30. And then behind him is Mehi. Mehi. She's latest one that I got and she's a spotted Appaloosa sorry le spotted leopard Appaloosa oh, wow. and she was from a feedlot in Washington and uh, the feedlot is basically the last place they are before they get uh, taken to Mexico or Canada where they kill them and sell them for me mm. and then ship them out of the sea. Wow, so they're almost all rescue horses they're all rescue yeah all right. What we are about to do is try a journey to the lower world. So in shamanism there's a lower world, a middle world and an upper world. And in the lower world is your power animals, which is your guardian disguised as an animal. Right? And they're waiting to meet you. The animal that you meet is going to be relevant to where you are now in your life and to help you where you're at right now. And you can have more power animals. Like I've had my first one was a peacock and now it's a cougar. 
you'll know it's your power animal because they're going to make eye contact with you, right? So that means they're going to look you in the eye. And if you're not sure, you can say, are you my power animal? to reveal itself um, and then I saw a, a cat a feline um, coming towards me and the closer it got the more it was clear it was it, it was a leopard and then all of a sudden uh, I felt fox just came really really close to my uh, my face and it just was chewing <laughs> and and I saw the whiskers and like it was it was, mm -hmm. I felt it. I felt the whiskers and it was really nice. Within three days you're going to get some kind of validation, right? So start looking for it. Validation that yes, it was a leopard, yes, it was a fox, yes, it was an eagle, yes, it was an eagle or a hawk. Um, that could be like you come across a feather or you come across some image or someone says something to you about it, right? To build the relationship, you want to journey again and I have no idea why this is so um, like hard. I mean, I already like I'm overwhelmed already. Yeah. All right. So we're just gonna give you the space. When I was born, I I guess my mom wasn't really happy at that time, like with herself. She was so afraid that I'm gonna have a great relationship with my dad, but not with her. So she made it. She did everything she could, and that, that happened. She did a really good job. Your dad, her boyfriend at that time? Or you don't know? Mm, there were so many guys in her life at that time, so... Uh, I think she was there also deciding between my dad and some other guy. And so you don't know if your dad is your real dad? No, no. I mean, the thought came to my mind and I just dis like brushed it off because... Uh, I decided I don't want to know. You don't want to know? Yeah. You don't want to know who your dad is? I don't know. Why would your mom lie to you then, do you think? Why would she not tell you the truth about who your dad is? Oh, uh, I'm sure she's ashamed. I'm sure she... Oh my God, there must be so much that she's hiding. So what? how would things be different for you if you forgave your... Well, let's say this, if you f weren't blaming your mom anymore. I can't, I can't picture that. I mean, how's your life anyway? Is your life really great? No. <laughs> oh. 
if if you look if I look at it from the uh, outside view, then it's incredible. Mm-hmm. But it's <laughs> not inside. Okay. All right. So so would you like to be congruent on the inside and the outside, meaning that like what's on the inside is the same as the outside? Do you like that? Because that would be a good intention mm-hmm. to have. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Okay. So feel into your feet and your body. You know it, it's in your body. It's in the field, right? It's in the information field. I'm feeling irritated. Feeling like agitated. It just felt kind of out of, out of orbit. What? You know, like um, out of orbit. Yeah, like like I didn't know where my son was. And at, at you, you I would love to slap you <laughs> right now. I would, especially when you laugh like that, mate. You want to slap your heart. Out. I mean, is it? Tell me what's going on for you. Tell me what's going on. I know exactly who you are. Yeah. I mean, because you because you resonate with it, right? Yeah. All right. Let's look at the paper. I'm mum. I'm bio dad. Bio dad. <sighs> so I didn't feel really connected with you. Yeah. Right. No. I mean, it definitely didn't feel like. No. I mean, I was just kind of like, like, you know, oh, you're checked out. Yeah, and that's how it felt for me, too. This is the test, okay? So I want you to close your eyes, all right? And one of you is gonna stand behind her. So don't look. Mm -hmm. And, And we have all of your ancestors on your dad's side behind you right now. Um, what happened? It's very powerful. It's powerful, right? Standing here now with him there, I'm telling you, I'm saying this, this is your father. This is our daughter who we brought in together. All that judgment that you have around your mom or her behavior or who she slept with or whatever, right? This is bigger than that. Your life mm-hmm. is bigger than that. Your mom brought you in and you know what? The fact that she did that is enough. Yeah. Mm. How do you feel? I just feel a really nice feeling towards you. Mom. Yeah. <laughs> Can we hug? And we're going to bow to you, Christina, and your constellation. And we're going to leave it with you and as we remove ourselves from the roles. 